Hello, I'm Craig Lee, Operations Manager here in Battleground, Washington. In today's video, we're going to talk about low voltage bushing supports and show you a couple different methods of adding them if your transformer doesn't come with them. You would be surprised to know just how many leaks are caused by unsupported low voltage bushings. Basically, when you add lots of heavy cable onto a low voltage bushing, the gasket becomes compressed on the bottom and not on the top. And over time, that can cause leaking from the top of the gasket. Bushing supports keep upward tension on that bushing paddle, relieving the strain on the bushing assembly and gasket and prevents that sort of a leak. There's no hard and fast rule, but adding any more than eight cables per phase, depending on the size of the cable, is a situation where you'd want to consider adding bushing supports. Most of the time here at Maddox, we'll be providing bushing supports standard with any transformer that's large enough to need them. But not all manufacturers do. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to add bushing supports in the field. Links for all the tools we're using today will be in the description. So the tools that you're gonna need for this project are a level, a wrench, a drill, two drill bits, a way to cut the glastic material. You'll need some hardware, some 3H carriage bolts, some quarter inch carriage bolts. You'll need flange nuts for both and just some quarter inch bolts to screw into the spades. Uh, you'll need some safety equipment, you'll need some gloves, some eye protection, and a respirator for cutting the glassing. A level and a speed square is also useful. One of the first things you're gonna to to do is measure the width of your cabinet. Ensure that the height of that brace is not covering access or viewing to any of your gauges. In order to attach your cross brace, you're gonna to need to cut two pieces of angled glastic for it to attach to. In this case, they're two inches wide. You're gonna to need to mark the middle of each side of the angled glastic. Using your larger drill bit, drill two holes. Flush it up to the end of your cross brace and bolt them together. Repeat this step on the other side. It's important to ensure that your bracket is flush with your cross brace. You're gonna dry fit your brace into the cabinet, keeping in mind not to cover any of your gauges. Ensure your cross brace is level and level it down to your bushing spades. Mark your holes on the sides of your cabinets and drill through. Bolt the bracket to the side of the cabinet and the center barrier utilizing your 3H carriage bolt and a flange nut. Measure down from your cross brace down to the center of your bushing spade. Add one inch to that total measurement and transfer that onto your glastic piece to cut. Utilizing your smaller drill bit, drill through the glastic at the point which you marked. Go ahead and cut your glastic strip to the correct length. Grab a quarter inch bolt with a lock washer and washer and bolt into your spade. Utilizing a speed square or a level, ensure that your vertical piece is straight up and down. Utilizing your smaller drill bit, drill through both your support piece and your cross brace. Now take your quarter inch carriage bolt along with a quarter inch flange nut and bolt together. Once you've completed the first support, repeat that exact process for your remaining spade. Once all your braces are in, be sure to take a rag and clean up your glastic dust, uh, wiping down all surfaces. Please ensure that all of your hardware is tight and secure. Thank you for watching today's video.